So just a quick introduction. My name is Nicola Woodford-Smith. I am the subject partner here at Pearson uh, in the maths team, working alongside an incredible, incredible bunch of colleagues who help produce and support, uh, produce resources and support you all uh, throughout the qualifications. Uh, you may have seen me on some events uh, previous to this. Um, and I also sit behind the Maths Emporium content that, that you guys receive uh, and also our Twitter pages. So if there's any questions that you have, please feel free. You can get in touch with me at teachingmaths.pearson.com uh, and I'm always happy to answer any questions you have on any of the qualifications we have um, on offer for you and your students. Uh, today in particular, I'm going to talk to you about one of my favourite courses. Of course, I love them all, but I absolutely love teaching this course. Uh, that's GCSE Statistics. Uh, and the the numbers of students that are, are taking uh, GCSE Statistics are growing uh, exponentially. And so we thought that must mean that the demand of capacity of teachers teaching it is also growing. And so there's probably going to be some of you that have not taught this course before. Um, and hopefully in the hour that we have, I'll be able to just skim over some of the really important um, elements that, that you might have questions around uh, in terms of delivering it for the first time. Um, but of course, please, like I said, please do send me uh, an email after. Um, there's the Q&A and, and the chat as well, where we've probably got some heads of department in the call that um, uh, have, have delivered this before and are just listening for updates. So please share share with each other. So if I just go through what uh, I'll be covering for uh, this afternoon, lots of uh, centres get in touch with us about promotional materials around GCSE statistics, you know, some resources behind the offer at options evenings to try and promote uh, students to select GCSE statistics. I'm just going to go through a very quick few bullet points on, on those arguments that you should give when, when trying to recruit uh, statisticians into taking into taking the course, why they should take it. I'll give you an overview of the assessment structure and uh, the key objectives uh, and the weightings, uh, all of the resources uh, that we've got on offer, uh, and then we'll spend the majority of the time on some key content. I know when I first started to deliver GCSE statistics, a few specifications back actually, um, I started to uh, worry, I guess, as, as an NQT, absolutely worry about new content, things that weren't on the GCSE maths uh, specification and what additional things did I need to know. Uh, but also there's a lot of overlap. So I just want to reassure, you know, the majority of you, this is definitely um, a course that can be delivered in parallel, if not, um, you know, engaged with a lot of the overlap between GCSE maths and stats kind of lend themselves to each other. Um, so there's, you know, it doesn't need to be a standalone uh, delivery. Uh, and I'm also going to hopefully reassure you around the statistical inquiry cycle um, because coursework went a few specifications ago and controlled assessment then went uh, before this, this specification. So no courseworks, no controlled assessments. It's all built in through the statistical inquiry cycle. So we'll, we'll talk a bit about that as well. So let's uh, get started. Um, I've got a couple of questions for you that I'm just uh, eager to just get your brains ticking and whether or not um, you can take a look at this question. I appreciate that the text is quite quite small, um, but this question here, I just want to, um, want you to have a think about. Feel free uh, to, to put your selections in the chat if you wish, but just to in your mind whether you think that this past paper question using a Venn diagram appeared on a GCSE stats paper or whether it appeared on a GCSE maths paper. Uh, there's always a couple of seconds delay, so I'll, I'll, I'll give you time to have a think. It's, it's basically asking adults whether they uh, enjoy watching football, cricket or rugby. And the Venn diagram is there, so students are being asked uh, which like all three, etc. So a Venn diagram question, do you think that this was on a maths paper or a stats paper? So some mixed opinions, whether we think it's GCSE maths or GCSE stats question. There you go, out of your misery, everybody. This appeared last year in the foundation paper one on GCSE stats. This was a GCSE stats question. Nice to see people saying either. 
So this was a, a stats question. Got a couple of these just to warm ourselves up. So how about this one? This is um, an organization, a road traffic organization investigating speeds of cars uh, and motorcycles along a, a motorway. So we've got the speed and we've got the percentage of cars doing that speed and the percentage of motorcycles doing that speed. So what do you think? Do you think this question would have appeared on a GCSE maths or a GCSE stats? Yeah, we appreciate that actually some cases could be both, but this is a past paper question. So what paper did it come from? A stats question or a maths question? I think we have a unanimous, unanimous decision on this one. Of course, it was statistics. There is a slight giveaway. Tell us why it's a statistics question. Um, often, I think we don't see uh, two data entries on our on a, um, a table like this. Um, so that would probably give it away. And also the way that the data is presented uh, for the percentage of motorcycles, there's, uh, there's a problem there, isn't there? Uh, and so um, those sorts of questions uh, tend to come up in statistics. Yes, thank you. It's called cleaning data. Um, so yeah. Um, one more for you. So a couple of spinners, three-sided spinners. Uh, we've got a probability tree diagram to complete and then to work out the probability of it landing on a, a two on spinner A and not on a two on spinner B. So last one for you. This is a past paper question. Do we think it's a GCSE maths exam or a GCSE stats exam question? And yes, I think the majority win the maths 2020. It's paper three. Uh, you can probably just make out there that's question five. So higher tier question um, from maths 2020. But really, really interesting to see several of you saying, oh, it could be on either. And I think we need to bear that in mind when we're talking about the um, overlap in the content and we certainly do hear from from uh, teachers uh, across across the country that say or oh, I just don't think we've got the capacity in the team to deliver stats as well as maths and we're here and I'm sure there's plenty of people that are sat in this event this afternoon that would say it's not um, the capacity doesn't have to be there as much as you think it does there's a lot of overlap and dovetailing that takes place Let's have a look at why we should choose stats. Why would you stand on your stall on options evening and, and tell students to choose GCSE stats? Or also that stall could be in, in an SLT meeting where you're trying to, to get the buy-in of your leadership team to, to produce uh, the, the timetabling and, and to allow for students to take this additional GCSE. So first of all, uh, if you're having a, an SLT conversation, I would definitely be leading with the performance measures. It counts in that third bucket. Um, a number of years, GCSE statistics come and saved the day on the Progress 8 measures for some of the students where they, they fell a little bit short in some of the other subject areas where they were expecting to, to catch that progress. Uh, and GCSE, they, they, they outperformed on GCSE statistics and it came in and improved their Progress 8 measure. The assessment structure is really straightforward. I'll, sh I'll show that to you in a second for those of you that are not familiar with how we assess uh, GCSE stats. And of course, I'll, I'll keep going on about the skills and the overlapping between the two, but not only between the two of GCSE maths and GCSE statistics, but I'm sure you're all aware of um, geography, GCSE geography and the data analysis, science uh, and hypotheses and testing and uh, you know the experimental skills that you need in analyzing data. Um, it, it's transferable a, across many, and even at A level, if students start to pick up um, some of the social sciences, um, sociology and psychology, there's lots of skills that GCSE statistics will provide for those students. It's really clear the approach that, that lends itself to GCSE stats and the content is, I'd say, real world maths familiar, the context is familiar to the students. And I think um, a lot of the time the students will make more sense of it. We'll talk a bit about that uh, a bit later on. The exam papers, 
accessible for everybody. Um, we get really good feedback on our statistics papers. And of course, the biggest thing that Pearson Edexcel are known for in terms of their maths uh, qualifications is all of the support that we've got on offer. And I will talk to you about the ongoing support um, around GCSE statistics and the plans that we've got coming up over the next academic year. So the assessment structure, if you're not sure how this is presented, there are two papers. Uh, they're both compulsory uh, and they're both externally marked. Uh, they're equally weighted, so both count for 50% of the total GCSE, and you can. Um, there are 80 marks on both uh, 90 minutes. And just as in the GCSE maths content, uh, the, the content that's covered uh, appears on both. So, you know, it's not paper one is only on probability, etc., and paper two is on such and such. You know, both, both papers cover the entire um, content. So the weightings are slightly shifted if you're um, considering GCSE in terms of uh, GCSE maths in terms of AO1, 2 and 3. So 55% is um, weighted at AO1. So just that knowledge and understanding, so that's 55%, so that's higher uh, than GCSE maths, both at the foundation and the, the higher tier. Uh, foundation is 50% and the higher tier is 40%. So a higher proportion of AO1 marks for GCSE stats. AO2, so just that interpreting of the information, being able to you know, reason with the information that they've been presented with and to draw those conclusions. 25% weighting there and 20% at assessing the appropriateness. So drawing those conclusions, but also addressing them through the statistical inquiry, being a little bit more critical um, around uh, what's been presented to them. Let's have a look at the grade boundary analysis, uh, because I think it's important to, to draw this out again with the conversations that you're having, particularly with your students, um, but primarily with your, your, your leadership team. Let's have a look. The top table uh, on this slide gives the um, grade boundaries for GCSE statistics. And then the one at the bottom gives grade boundaries for GCSE maths. Now, this is um, pulling on data from last year. And I think you'll be surprised to see uh, that we've got, if, if we look at the grade four, for example, um, grade four and above, we awarded uh, 73, just over 73% grade fours and above in GCSE stats, uh, in comparison to 60% grade four and above in GCSE maths. So more students are getting a grade four or above on just GCSE statistics. And there's lots of reasons why that is. As I say, students find the papers really accessible. They find the content really familiar. But also we need to bear in mind that GCSE maths is a double weighted subject. So it, pardon the pun, but it's a lot heavier. There is a lot more content. If you think about the content of uh, GCSE RE, GCSE geography, any of those other um, kind of bucket three subjects, they don't feel as heavy. So students are able to really get into understanding the full content of that course uh, of GCSE statistics. And so they, they tend to perform a lot better on GCSE stats than they do uh, on GCSE maths. And also, I think it's important to, to pick up, we'll talk about this uh, in, in a little bit, but just because a GCSE maths student is being entered at foundation tier does not lend itself to studying statistics at the foundation tier. I've taught many students before who are foundation tier math students, but higher tier statisticians because of the way that they can interpret and analyze data um, and also Nine times out of 10, they're, they're teenagers that are able to, to criticize and to argue their case, um, which is what I used to say to my students a lot of the time. Let, let's put your teenage argumentative selves into action here and really pull apart and be critical about the information that you're being presented with. And I think we do that a lot, even in PSHE, when we're, we're talking about 
topics in the media and we, we, we get students to debate properly. This is a great qualification to champion that sort of critical lens uh, on the data that they're being presented with. So do bear that in mind when you're doing your tier entries and think about the less abstract element that is involved in GCSE statistics. Um, lots of foundation tier GCSE mathematicians um, can struggle with the abstract nature of uh, the algebra or geometric reasoning, for example, uh, but they really thrive on statistics and probability. And, and, so, and, and on the flip side as well, you might find that some of your higher tier mathematicians might struggle a little bit more on that articulation of the, the contextual problems at GCSE stats. So it really is down to, you know, considering those students that you've got in front of you and how they would perform in a statistics environment rather than just taking uh, their maths tiering um, as, as a, a lend into the GCSE stats. With that in mind, let's look at what we've got ready for you uh, to, to kickstart this delivery. So just bearing in mind that we are getting ready to deliver this in September. We have, these are the published resources. Um, in that delegate pack, you have a PDF download of these slides. So where you can see the hyperlinks, um, they, they are in those slides. So you can access all of these um, straight after the um, the event, but there is, um, so there's a textbook. Uh, I absolutely love the textbook, but the, the items that I loved the most were the revision guides. Um, and I had class sets of the revision guides, the one on the right hand side, almost as that textbook, because I could photocopy it um, if I wanted to. Um, and then some of the students, I used to use pupil premium money um, if I wanted to get students to use the, the workbooks. Um, I used to, to buy those in for the individual students to write in. But the revision guides are really good in terms of additional practice. But definitely um, do take a look. Uh, and you can get in touch with us if you want some samples sent. Um, do email us at teachingmaths at pearson.com um, and we can get you in touch uh, with your, your local uh, curriculum manager and they can send you out some samples so you can have a look at these or do use the link and you can have a look at the ebooks um, yourselves because obviously that would be a lot quicker. Um, of course, the scheme of work is, is vital. I know lots of you will, will be downloading that. It's on the GCSE Stats website um, and also on the Maths Emporium. Uh, so the scheme of work is there. It gives you some guided teaching hours. But if I just pick up on this topic, for example, the types of data, just want to um, pick out that there, there is that overlap. Of course, we've got some nuances between them, but we at maths level, if we talk GCSE maths, students do need to know the different you know, types of data in terms of secondary, primary, that kind of stuff. When they're doing other subjects like geography, they will know about primary and secondary sources and quantitative and qualitative data. So these are things that you can do that are not necessarily as part of your GCSE maths curriculum. But once you start to dig into this, you'll realize that do you need three to six hours delivering this um, content when you know that they're coming coming from another subject uh, and, and have a, a good background uh, in this data uh, analysis already. So in terms of other resources, there are some extensive mapping documents that are also on the Emporium and on the website, and they go both ways. So if you want to map uh, the maths to the stats, that's the, the screenshot you're seeing uh, at the moment. So it's got one MA1, the GCSE maths course in the first column, and it maps it to the spec references in GCSE stats. Or there's also a document that goes the other way. So if you want to see where the stats element is mapped to the GCSE maths one, they will go the other way. But I think you can see, if you've got really good eyes, I appreciate, I just wanted to get a screenshot of this um, as reference. But again, uh, they're, they're on the website and on the Maths Emporium. But you can see how each of those nine probability spec references are mapped over to the GCSE stats content in several places. You can see a repetition of stats content popping up across multiple areas of the GCSE maths course. So lots of overlap uh, that you'll find.
So in terms of practice materials, um, I've already mentioned the Mass Emporium several times. So please do make sure that you are signed up. Uh, it's all, f all free. You just need to use um, your centre email address and your centre number. Um, it's the massemporium.com. So if you do want to sign up to, t I'm going to say tens of thousands of free resources on that website, um, please do sign up and get registered. But there you will find all of the past papers. Uh, there are shadow papers there as well, which we have started to produce. So they are like they imply uh, almost a mirror version of, of the live paper and shadow papers are really valuable for things like mocks. We often find that there are walkthroughs of some of our secure materials. I'm sure lots of you have come across that before where you think, oh, how can I securely assess my students when they can easily go on to you know, YouTube or Instagram and, and someone's got hold of the, the paper somewhere and they're going through it. but that's not so accessible for shadow papers because they just sit on the mass emporium and students don't have access to that. So shadow papers will take the questions that have appeared in those, um, those series into the summer series and will change the names, change the numbers, but the assessment objectives and the content weightings are exactly the same. So you can apply those grade boundaries from that series uh, and have a really good picture uh, of where your students are at in terms of their progress. Um, as with any qualification, there are sample assessment materials um, and some specimen papers. We produce two sets of those papers. And then, of course, the examiners pick out some nice uh, questions and answers to provide marking guidance uh, in the sets of exemplars that are released as well. So a really good tool if you're trying to not only in terms of CPD for your departments, but also as a great teaching and learning resource in your lessons when you're coming up to those exams and doing exam practice, putting a question in front of the student, uh, your students and saying, well, where do you think this student lost the marks? Why do you think this examiner didn't award the marks here? And then showing them what the examiner feedback was. They're a really powerful example of you know, spot where, well, spot where the, the students gone wrong here. Students like to be critical of, of their peers on things like that. Um, I've mentioned the mapping documents. All of these are hyperlinked. Um, so I think the document uh, will appear just after the, um, the session uh, if it's not there already. So please don't worry, it will be there. Um, so the, the links are, are all on here for you to access after. But like I said, there's the, the mapping documents that go from maths to stats and stats to maths, depending on, on what you're looking for. Um, and there is a teacher guide for that statistical inquiry cycle. Um, and some FAQs that we'll talk about uh, a bit later. Um, I did say that I'll come up um, with some explanations around what's coming next. So in terms of the shadow papers, they are a new resource that we've just started to, to produce because of um, how popular they are and the security behind them, as I've mentioned, um, so, but how popular they are for GCSE maths. And another um, practice material that's really popular with, are the themed papers. Uh, for GCSE Maths. So we, we've got our heads together in, in the Maths team uh, here and have thought, well, let's put some themed papers together for, for the stats as well. So those standalone topics that you, you need a student to practice on particularly, that could be, uh, I don't know, practicing mean from a table or we've seen, you know, uh, probability tree diagrams. So all of the questions that we've got from GCSE stats exams that can go into the themed papers, uh, we're going to produce those. Uh, there'll be a, a rolling out release over the next academic year. As, as you can imagine, that's that's quite a hefty task, uh, but they are on the on the production line, shall we say. So new themed papers and they'll be really handy for those standalone topics that don't come into the crossover. So things like the normal distribution um, and uh, binomial probability, that kind of stuff. It'd be nice to have a little bank of questions all in one place uh, for you to have. And we'll have some work solutions for those and the mark schemes as well. So do keep your eyes out for those coming out as uh, the next academic year kicks off. Right, let's talk about um, the key content 
uh, that we can find in GCSE uh, stats. There are um, several things I want to pick up here. Uh, I'll do it by tier. So the first thing I want to talk to you about is that forming a statistical hypothesis. So these are what's this is what's expected at the foundation tier. Students, and let's face it, they, they, they're doing this in science. They know how to formulate a hypothesis, um, but they, they, they can transfer those skills over here into statistics. Know that the hypothesis can only be tested through collection and analysis of data. Uh, a formal use of that null hypothesis is not going to be required. Uh, they know that there's going to be constraints to, to design in an investigation. So all those ethical issues, confidentiality, time and cost is the one or the two things, should I say, that I used to drill into my students all the time. What's the problem with this? It's going to cost money. It's going to take time. So real good critical eye over, over the investigations, uh, investigation design. And determining those proactive strategies. So have they found the problem? Can they mitigate issues? Um, again, getting into that critical mind uh, that teenagers are really good at doing. They need to know the types of data. I've touched on this um, uh, a little bit, but knowing qualitative versus quantitative, um, the primary and secondary, also um, the populations and sampling. Um, there's some lovely materials out there and the textbook's really good for this, but understanding that population doesn't mean as in the whole population. We could have the whole population of, of strata. Um, so that's a really good conversation and, and a fun exercise to do with, with students um, as well. And, and employing the choices around the sampling that they want to use, um, the opportunity sampling and, and judgment sampling and, and that, that kind of thing. I think they'll be most common, commonly aware of the opportunity sampling uh, via, you know, they may have seen people in the, in the high street with their clipboards. Uh, they know that they're, they're just getting the opportunity to ask people. But it's real good conversations um, to, to bring this maths and stats to life. Um, so here the... Um, Content here comes from the scheme of work, um, and you can see that uh, the underlined content will um, be in the foundation tier, um, and it's also uh, kind of standalone from um, the GCSE maths course as well. So if we look at questionnaires, for example, we know questionnaires are not on uh, GCSE maths, um, Students are not asked to, to uh, look at the difference between primary and secondary data at GCSE maths um, and, you know, random sampling, systematic sampling, quota sampling. So these are standalone topics um, outside of uh, the GCSE maths. But again, like we've said, they're going to have a lot of input already about how to avoid bias uh, or recognising bias what an open or closed question that's coming from English. So again, not a lot of time required to be delivering this, this sort of content. So when they're processing, representing and analyzing data, there are some um, crossover because we, we do this a lot at uh, GCSE. So being able to read from a scatter graph, being able to, um, you know, uh, analyze the, the mean from a table, for example, but outside of GCSE maths, there are population pyramids and chloropleth maps, which I absolutely love teaching chloropleth maps because it wouldn't take more than an hour's lesson and you could combine them all. Um, and students like to color and shade or, or etch onto their, their diagrams. Um, but also recognizing the errors. Uh, again, students are really good at doing this, need very little input for, from you guys as leads but they will be able to see if an, a, a, a graph is distorted or if the scales are wrong. Um, it's like a spot the difference almost. They, they can pick up an error, if you like, straight away uh, and when something doesn't look quite right. Um, in terms of the measures of central tendency, we're just asking students here to interpret the skewness so when the data does shift or look like it's shifted away from um, you know, the, the central measure, um, there's certainly no calculations required um, at foundation tier. These ones you will recognize um, from the higher tier, but they are um, brought into the foundation tier of statistics. So calculating the quartiles, interquartile range, etc. But outside of the GCSE um, 
uh, context, the GCSE maths context, uh, they, they might have to be comparing them at foundation tier as well, like you would see with box plots um, or the cumulative frequency graphs. Uh, you'll see that in, in the foundation tier here. Um, they won't be um, calculating the interquartile range and percentiles um, on the foundation tier as, as in-depth as they would um, on the higher tier in, in GCSE maths. Um, the given median, comparing data samples, we've spoken about those, and further summary to statistics, which we'll talk a bit um, uh, later on in the year. We want to put on some more events, but this consumer price index and retail price index, they're introduced to these uh, calculations um, but, you know, just in real context where they'll, they'll understand them and be able to use the real world context to apply them. Correlation comes up, uh, you know, with, with the uh, line of best fit um, and they can calculate that double mean points. They find the mean of the X values and find the mean of the Y values and make sure that their line of best fit goes through. So these are the nuances against um, the GCSE maths uh, content. Spearman's rank correlation coefficient may appear at the foundation tier, but there is absolutely no calculation required. Um, and I find that the majority of students like uh, the idea of the, the ranking, they can see the priority in the data and how um, you know, the, the data analysis comes in. I think there is no harm um, if time permits, however you are delivering your GCSE stats course um, at doing maybe a lunchtime club um, on, on you know, everyone's welcome. Come and come and have a look at Spearman's rank. And once they've seen the formula, whether they're foundation or higher tier, um, it's a nice, almost process driven uh, formula that they can use. And and it really builds their confidence uh, where they, they feel like they're doing some complicated calculations. So even though the calculation is not required at foundation tier, I certainly wouldn't shy away from introducing them to it if, if time permits. Uh, time series is um, present, uh, the four point moving average. Um, again, it's just using the averages and, and inputting it into the table. So again, not too high um, of a demand. And with estimation and probability, um, you know, students know how to interpret risk, but there's some calculations around the relative risk and the absolute risk that I'll, I'll talk to you about um, shortly. So I just want to spend a second on this higher tier. So you can see the black text um, on, on this uh, grid here is the content that is already in the foundation tier. So it's no additional um, content that they need in the foundation tier. The red text is the higher tier GCSE maths. So you can see that there's that overlap um, between the two, like, you know, like we keep saying, uh, there's a lot of overlap between them. So you can see that the probability there is already in the GCSE higher maths, uh, the S3 spec point at higher, that's already in higher maths. So you can see that the level of demand um, is, is not as high as you think it is. So there, are, there is no foundation um, tier formula sheet because again the, the the types of formula they need they're already doing it at gcse mass like you know uh the, the uh, average mean from a table etc so there's no kind of formal formula they need at the foundation tier but they do need um some formulae at the higher tier so this is um the formula page that is embedded in every higher tier stats paper I'm going to whistle through um, the content here at the types of data because a lot of it over overlaps between what we've already said, like you can see on, on the screen. So primary and secondary advantages and disadvantages, all of the population sampling that we've spoken about. At higher tier, they do need to calculate that skew rather than a recognition at foundation tier. But of course, the, the formula is given. And the central tendency and measures of dispersion absolutely love teaching this to i've taught it to all of my students um so that standard deviation calculation um, again with the formula provided identifying those outliers um, by inspection again that's that critical eye that we're after from our higher tier students um, the formula pages if i just go back there um the make sure i've got the whole slide for you to see measures of central tendency i just wanted to pick up that the formula uh, for the standard uh, devi deviation will be given on that formula sheet so the summary statistics so we'll talk about price indexes 
gross domestic product. Great to tie that in with current affairs um, as part of, you know, promoting that general context in real life, um, which is why students do so well on the GCSE stat. They see the purpose. They understand the, the relevance to, to the real world, if you like. And again, with this, you know, birth rates, we talk about uh, the birth rates and house prices and interpreting data. And they're probably used to seeing this on, on the news or in, in newspapers and magazines, etc. cetera. Uh, we've spoken about Spearman's rank, um, the calculation, uh, the formulas given. There's no formula um, or calculation required of the Pearson's product uh, moment correlation, um, but just the, the interpretation of it is, is, is fun for, for them to do. The four point moving averages, uh, we've spoken about those. So again, there's a nice crossover between the two tiers and that quality assurance, knowing when that warning line is and when to, to you know, go back and revisit your, your hypothesis. Um, probabilities to evaluate the risk that we'll talk about. And as I've mentioned already about that binomial calculation, it's only up to three events. They do not need to be using that whole Pascal binomial expansion. Um, they can simply do the probability of one event and the probability of the next and the probability of the next and, and, and just calculate as they would normal, uh, normally. And then looking at that normal distribution um, is a real eye opener and introducing the, the higher tier students about how far away the spread of the data is from that central point uh, and, and how many you know, standard deviations that is, you know, teaching them about the, the one standard deviation and two standard deviations, et cetera, is a really good, uh, uh, a good session to have with those higher tier mathematicians. It gives them, uh, and statisticians, it gives them something new uh, to, to get their teeth into. So I've got a list here of key uh, topics uh, that you may want to explore for CPD. I've got some slides here. Obviously, I'm, I'm conscious of time and don't want to rush through um, too, too quickly. Um, the ones in red, I think, is uh, important for us as a team to put on a second CPD event uh, as the, the new academic year is underway, maybe November time or, or maybe after Christmas when you're really starting to get into the thick of uh, those topics and, and we can do a, a CPD session on um, on how to deliver these topics if it's it's coming up uh, for you for the first time for teaching. Um, I'm going to go through a couple of the um, top ones so the chain based index and geometric mean. Um, so you get an idea of, of these sorts of uh, topics as they appear because they you wouldn't have seen them in the in the GCSE mass. So if we talk about chain based uh, index numbers, this is a classic example, um, you know, how how over time uh, the the uh, value increases and what it increases by and working out the geometric mean. Um, I've put the mark scheme there. This is is um, for you to, to take a look at um, here. But I think you can see if you've not taught chain based index before or, or the geometric mean, um, if students just look at the difference between one year uh, and, and the previous so here, it's going from um, it's doing the odd odd years, so 2011, 13, 2015, and 2017. Uh, but if we want to start by getting a correct calculation for the chain base index number, um, because they've got to fill in that blank, um, that blank box under 2017. So we would do 56 over 54 and multiply that by 100, and that, that would give you your 103.7. Uh, and then you use that that, that's one mark, that's two marks, uh, a method mark and an, uh, an A1 mark already um, with actually very little demand in the mathematics. I'll let you have a look at, at the rest um, because it's going over the three um, data sets. You would find the cube root of the product of those uh, and, and oh, you're off and running a six mark question, some lovely maths to do in there. Um, this is an example of another chain based index question. So it's great to sit down as um, a department for CPD and have a look at these questions and just reassure yourselves at the level of demand um, that, that you would be asking of your students. Uh, but again, some, you know, two marks at each 
scaffolded point there to, to lead the students through um, and nice some nice maths. I want to talk to you um, more about the binomial probabilities because I remember as a, an NQT delivering this for the first time for GCSE students, I was a little bit wary on how the students would maybe deal with this or approach this, but I certainly didn't introduce them into any binomial expansion theorems, binomial theorem, noth nothing like that at all. And we just approached it from a context, real life, uh, you know, let's, let's, think about the words that this question is giving us. So in this example, like I said, there's a maximum of three events um, for GCSE statistics. So Jasper has three coins. There's your, there's your three events. So in an experiment, Jasper flips each of the three coins and records the total number of heads that he gets. He believes that each coin is biased so that the number of heads he gets can be modeled by the binomial distribution um, at three zero point four. So students just recognizing that notation is is key so we know that there's three events and we know that the probability of him getting a head is 0 0.4 so showing that the probability of getting zero heads is 0 0.216 one mark they don't need to know anything advanced about binomial the probability of not getting ahead and not getting ahead and not getting ahead that's that's what we're after so you can see on the left hand side of the mark scheme 0 0.6 times 0 0.6 times 0 0.6. We certainly do not expect to see any notation like you can see on the right hand side, but there will be students that have expressed this notation. And so that's why it's there as additional guidance. Um, but of course, we're just looking for that, that calculation that they understand what's happening in this context. And then for the next part of the question, work out the probability that the outcome of the experiment is exactly one head. Well, let's, you know, get them to think about what that looks like. That's getting, you know, one and then none or none and then one, you know, and all of those calculations. Um, so he's going to have um, two events where he doesn't and one event where he does. Um, and so the answer there is uh, 0 0.432. I'll let you do the maths with that after. But I just wanted to reassure you that there is no complex uh, brand new mathematics that the students need to know there. It's just using what they already know to transfer over. The question continues. Um, this is a nice kind of chunky bit as part C. He ca carries it out a hundred times. Again, I've put the um, the working out there. Of course, he just has to apply the hundred times to those expected frequencies uh, to to get uh, the the table filled in or each each bit there. They get. I think there's three marks awarded. They get their method. Um, uh, two marks, they get an M1 and A1 um, on there, and then their, their process marks come after. But um, just some, some brilliant maths once they get, it's almost like a roll up your sleeves type maths question. And they, they tend to be more resilient, um, I found GCSE students, because they understand the context. Uh, it's, it, you know, it's flipping coins and, and they can see what the, the maths is that's needed. So they're more resilient to approach these, these sorts of questions. So with risk, um, this question, they're trying to find out uh, what X is, is uh, in here. So Katrina is traveling by train or bus or by car to work. This is the collection of data that she's going over the past 200 journeys uh, last year, for example. So one of the days that she picked at random, find the probability that she traveled by train and was late to work. So of course you can tell from the uh, mark scheme uh, would be, 27 over 200, which I think you can see back from here. Um, just an easy, easy pick out of the table. Nice, easy mark, nice introduction uh, to the question. Um, and then when the absolute risk of her arriving late for work was 0 0.6, show why the value of X um, in the table is 18. And I think a nice one here is to say, well, actually, it's 0 0.6 times 30 um once you figure out that um you know it's uh the 18 over 30 uh in this one here so they just find you've got that um 0 0.6 uh multiplied by the the number that we've got given by bus um so the 30 is in in the table there 
Um, my colleague, uh, Mark Heslop, I'm sure you've, you've spoken uh, or heard of, of Mark or heard him speak about um, his love of GCSE stats. And he, he's, no, uh, he's not shy about saying that this is one of his favourites. Um, standardized scores. Again, it's really, really nice for students to understand how scores are standardized, um, especially with, with testing. Um, and they can they can really understand the context if they put themselves into the position. Uh, like here, we've got maths and physics and French tests um, and, and understanding that the, the standardized score um, is as it is presented by just uh, working out the, the difference between, I think we've got maths is 1.25. So just figuring out that the standard deviation or, or taking the standard deviation from the table um, and knowing that that is uh, away from um, the mean. So we've got the mean mark being 53 and 53 uh, from 63 is 10. Uh, and, then, and then using that over the standard deviation tells us we've got 1.25. Um, the textbook and the revision guide for standardised scores have got some lovely, lovely questions in there and they offer lots of practice. And also this is another topic that we would make sure we had as a, a themed paper. So if you had students that were working on standardised scores, um, you could have all of the questions in one bunch. So, you know, really focusing on, the, on that topic. So to finish up, um, I want to talk to you about the statistical inquiry uh, cycle that is almost that replacement of the um, controlled assessment. Um, part of me still shudders at, at the amount of work we used to do for, for controlled assessments and coursework um, and having it all in on time. But this is all now kind of encapsulated in the course itself. So students being able to you know, understand how to plan and collect and process and communicate after their interpretation of a, a whole kind of inquiry cycle is, is what these questions are aimed at. So the papers will do this. Students will be asked questions within their exam paper that just test their, their understanding of this concept. Uh, and it sounds like a lot and it sounds like it will be a big, hefty question, but I, I promise it's not. Um, so if I show you an example of one, uh, here's, here's an example of a question, a uh, foundation tier question. And it really just embeds the story. So Tina is investigating the performance of athletes at the Paralympics. Here's the data that she's collected by males and females that are competing in the F-34 javelin. And the, the data is there. Tina wants to compare the average distance thrown by males um, with those thrown by females. She thinks that she should use the mean uh, to compare the average, give one reason why the mean would not be appropriate. Uh, and students absolutely will, will love to answer. It's only one mark. Um, look, it looks wordy in terms of um, digesting the context, but I think students would rather read this sort of thing than happen to re produce a whole statistical inquiry themselves. But one mark, why, why would you not want to um, use the means from males versus the mean from, from females? She then goes on to talk about uh, wanting to have a scatter diagram uh, and she's going to, you know, maybe put uh, males against females. Students, I'm sure, are quite confident in discussing why you wouldn't have bivariate data here for male against female. There's no causation, there's no correlation between the two. Um, and again, that's three marks um, for that statistical uh, inquiry. There's the mark scheme uh, and the notes that were picked up for those two. Uh, I mentioned that, you know, it's not bivariate. Uh, we wouldn't, um, you know, use the, the means to analyze the, the female versus male because there's clearly an extreme value in the female distances. I'll let you have a look uh, in more data there. But again, it's that critical lens that the students are really good at. There's another example from the higher tier. So quite wordy, um, but again, just getting them to get, maybe read it like uh, almost like the story, like a comprehension task. You're going to go in and then you're going to criticize. Uh, so they get the, the data. Of course, this is cleaning data. Uh, that they'll talk about um, and 
you know, whether the size is too big, whether the, the population is, is too small, uh, whether it's going to take too much time, whether it's going to cost too much money. Um, all of those things are, are the common responses that we would see and expect students um, to criticise with. So in the last couple of minutes, um, I just want to point you in the direction of um, the three website links uh, that are going to be fundamental to you delivering this course. I've mentioned the GCSE Stats website a few times where you can find the resources. I know lots of you um, are on the Mass Emporium. We've got over 30,000 teachers now registered on the Mass Emporium using that. I certainly used it almost every day as a teacher where you will find all of those, as you can see from my screenshot here, the specification is there, the mappings are there, all those past papers. This is also where we will put those themed papers um, and the shadow papers and all the skills maps, for example, as well. And then we've got Exam Wizard, which is that, that tool, the free tool that you can use just using your Red Excel online account. Just log in and you can build your own papers if you wish. Um, so again, if you want to generate um, a homework or an end of term uh, assessment where you just want to cover some of the questions and some of the topics that you've delivered for that term, you can you can filter. Uh, you can filter them out um, and and select the ones it builds your mark scheme for you as well so another great tool and all the links are there for you to to use after uh, afterwards so i'm conscious that we've gone through uh quite quickly i'm just going to have a look at any questions that i may have missed um lots of people just asking if um they can have the link to the resources um so recommended teaching hours, um, they, they are in um, the scheme of work. Um, so you can have the recommended teaching hours there. But I think it's entirely up to you as, as a department whether or not you can find, um, like I said on that first section, uh, types of data. The, the recommended teaching hours is three, three to six. But I think with a lot of those transferable skills, you, you could do that within an hour. Um, so absolutely, there's there's lots of things um, where you can you can trim them down um, where where not necessary really. So as I've said earlier, you will have um, the downloadable slides where all the links will be there for you to use. I hope you guys have found it useful. I'm just going to. Um, remind you that you can get in touch with us um, if you've got any questions after this for, um, you know, whether it's GCSE stats, whether it's the Edexcel awards, GCSE maths, you can you can come through to all, all of us with any questions um, at teaching, uh, teaching maths at pearson.com. There's a whole team of, of math specialists on hand to help you um, with any questions uh, that you might have.